Now we'll explore the ways we're enabling educators to make learning more inclusive and accessible. Microsoft 365 for Education provides a comprehensive suite of collaboration, productivity, creation, and learning tools. At the center of this solution is Microsoft Teams, a hub for learning. Teams combines a live video for virtual and hybrid learning, asynchronous chat, classroom assignments, integration with common learning management systems, and so much more. Today, I want us to focus on three specific tools that directly support common challenges in schools. Literacy is foundational to all subject areas. Students that are challenged by reading will have issues in math, science, history, literally every subject. Whether they're learning how to read, learning in a second language, or children with learning differences, we have tools that can help. I'm joined here today by one of our product creators, Mike Tholfson. Mike, what are you working on here at Microsoft? Hey Paige, I work on the Microsoft Education product team. Our team is deeply focused on designing education experiences for all learners with a specific focus on tools for the inclusive classroom. That's so interesting. How do you do that? We use the principles of inclusive design to build free products and features for reading, writing, math, and communication. Pretty cool. Let's get to it. Where do you want to start? First, I'll be showing the Immersive Reader. The Immersive Reader is a tool that takes the latest science and research in reading and supports students of all abilities to better access text. We've built the Immersive Reader into many of the Microsoft 365 applications. It's built in, mainstream, non-stigmatizing, and free. Let's dive in. I'll be showing the Immersive Reader in the free Microsoft Word for the web. I'll click on the View menu here, and then I'll choose Immersive Reader you'll see that it takes all the text in that document and simplifies it. We call this focus mode. At the bottom, I can click the play button. The study of Earth's landforms is called physical geography. So we have a high quality read aloud voice and that's text to speech, word and line highlighting. I can change the way the page looks. We'll choose a dark theme in this case and I'll have a couple of font options I can choose from. I can make the text size much bigger or much smaller depending on what works best for me. If I go to grammar options, I can break all the words on the page into syllables with a single click. So now the words are broken. I can highlight different parts of speech by turning on these switches on or off. I can personalize this in a way that works best for me. I'll make the background blue now and we'll show the last part. Let's see line focus. This allows me to focus my eyes and it's like a digital reading ruler and overlay like many educators will have that allows students to focus on the page. I can choose three lines or five lines, whatever works best for me. And we'll turn that off. If I click on a word, you can see a picture dictionary and I can read that word out loud. Valleys, valleys. Lastly, I can open this up and translate in over 111 languages. We have a very large list here and I'm gonna choose Spanish. I'll translate the entire document and now I can read out loud. El estudio de los accidentes geográficos de la... And notice that we even have the syllables and parts of speech in these other languages. These Spanish words are broken into syllables. I'll go back to the original language right here and then hit the back button. This is not only free in Word for the web, it's built into Microsoft Teams, OneNote, Flipgrid, Forms, and many others. It's even built into our Edge browser. So here's a web page in Edge. I can highlight any text on the web so there's a blog and I'm just gonna right click and I will choose open in immersive reader. You'll see many of the text preferences and grammar tools and the reading preferences. If I want line focus or I wanna translate, I can do that on any web page. Let's choose French and read aloud. La dernière année et demi a mis en... Thanks, Mike. What impresses me the most is that everything you just showed was developed in collaboration with experts in the science of reading. And what I love about the Immersive Reader is that it's embedded across all of Microsoft's products, including the Edge browser, which gives learners access to a world of content. We also make it possible for our software partners to use the Immersive Reader in their own tools. We have partners like BrainPop, Canvas, Code.org, and many more that are all using this tool to make their offerings more inclusive. That's amazing. I think you can see how committed we are to helping all kids read. And speaking of great tools, Reading Progress is a game changer. Mike, can you tell us a little more about that solution? Reading Progress is a free reading fluency tool that uses built-in intelligence to save teachers time. 
Reading fluency measures reading speed, accuracy, and expression. This tool can help teachers accelerate kids' reading fluency. Let me show you how it works. I've created a new Teams assignment. I'll click Attach and choose Reading Progress. I can upload a Word or PDF document here. Now my passage is uploaded. I can set things like reading level, genre, number of attempts, if I want to give a time limit, as well as the pronunciation sensitivity and how picky I'd like this software to be. I can be less sensitive or more sensitive or default. We'll leave it at default and we'll require video in this case, but I could turn that off. Hit next and now I'll sign into my class. We'll switch over to the student video. She's opened up the assignment and now she's going to record herself. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. Here we've switched back to the teacher experience after the student has turned in the passage. Automatically, words per minute are detected. Accuracy rate, mispronunciations, omissions, insertions, repetitions, self-corrections, all automatically figured out. Now I'll start by playing the video of the student reading. The study of Earth's landforms is called bicycle geography. So you can see that it marked physical as a mispronunciation. So it auto-detected that the student said that word incorrectly. I'm going to jump down to a different section right here. It looks like region was mispronounced. So what I can do is click on this and I can choose jump to word and watch what happens. Reg and reg are often. And notice how I can jump to the word and see the video and hear it. I can also turn off auto detect. I don't have to have it automatic, but I showed it with the automated part. Now we're going to look at automatic class insights. We capture average words per minute for every student as well as the class. We capture accuracy rate, mispronunciations, omissions, insertions, and we even have a word cloud of the most challenging words and the words that were most mispronounced. Educators get a class view or they can drill into a per student view. Gosh, Mike, this tool looks so amazing. I used to volunteer in a middle school administering fluency assessments, and this would have saved me so much time. Hey, speaking of tools that can make a difference, I know student emotional well-being is top of mind for most educators, and your team has been hard at work building a tool that can help educators check in on learners and their emotional well-being. Can you show us your new Reflect solution? Sure, Paige. Reflect allows educators to quickly check in on the emotional state of their learners. Let me show you how it works. I'm signed into Teams as an educator, and I'm going to click the New Conversation button. I'll create a new Reflect check-in for my class. So right here is the Reflect button, and I'll click it. Here's the Reflect dialog. I can ask a question, and I'm going to ask, how are you feeling today? But as an educator, I have a bunch of different questions around goals, learning, or just personal and social. There are also important privacy controls, so I can make this completely anonymous. I can make it so only the teacher sees the responses. I'll go down and click send to post this message to the class. Here's that reflect message. Now I'll sign in as a student to show how you fill it out. I'm signed in as the student and here's that reflect post. How are you feeling today? I'll go here and click on emotion. Now I'm gonna name my emotion and I have lots of options. By hovering on the word, I also get this feelings monster and this helps me visualize what this emotion might look like and I can hover and get different feelings monsters. Maybe I want to change this and perhaps I feel a little bit differently, so I'll choose this one now. I have some different emotions and I can hover and get some different visualizations as well. In this case, I'm feeling a little bit anxious. I can go down and see all previous responses as well. And this is how I feel over time. But in this case, I'm just going to submit my reflect for today and then close. Now I'm signed back in as a teacher and I want to explore this daily check-in that I've done with Reflect. So I go here and click Explore. I get a nice distribution of how people are feeling across the class, and I can drill in on specific students. So I'll drill in on the top here. I can get a sense of how Marsha, James, and Ellen are doing in previous reflections, and I can look for trends or patterns. I'll go back and click Done. Even more interesting, I can look at class insights. And I'll go here and click Insights, and now I have an entire class dashboard of all the different check-ins and emotions across my class. I can look for patterns. 
I can scroll down here and see some of the most common words that have been used. Cheerful, overwhelmed, creative. Here I can get a student list that shows a little weekly summary of how my students are feeling. The last thing to show with Reflect is that we also have school and district dashboards available. What this allows is that a school leader at a glance can check on the school climate. It's an easy check of that school pulse, which is so important right now. Wow, I can see how this tool can help teachers and school leaders tune in to how their students are feeling, even if their building is closed down. It's amazing to me that we have a dedicated team of education experts working with researchers and education customers around the world to develop solutions that matter in learning. Thanks for being here with us, Mike. Thanks, Paige. Every time I see those tools, I get inspired by the possibilities for supporting learners and teachers. There's never been a better opportunity to leverage technology to get students excited about learning. Let's look at a great example of that. We're gonna visit a school in Chicago. They're using Minecraft education to support student engagement across the curriculum. My name is Tracy Snell, and I am the STEM Program Manager for Chicago Vocational Career Academy through the Office of Early College and Careers. Chicago Vocational Career Academy is a wall-to-wall -wall STEM school. That entails STEM being a part of every content discipline within the building. Our students enter a Minecraft education competition, which is called the Shy Town Showdown, where they had to recreate Navy Pier here in Chicago. Due to the pandemic, the district initiated this project with Minecraft as a means to re-engage students and get them excited and ready to return to school in person. I'm kind of a little gamer myself, and I got real excited about it because a lot of schools were trying to figure out how to re-engage the students. So it, it turned everything around. The um, class that did the Minecraft, they have the highest attendance out of all my classes during the day. They, they just jumped in with both feet. I've seen all the schools very engaged, but our team won first place. I've definitely learned a lot from this. I learned about teamwork. It was a lot of difficult tasks, but you need a team in order to make something big. Minecraft is a, is a really good team experience. Opportunities such as the Minecraft competition opens the door to expose them to other opportunities that's outside of the school building. They accomplished so much, and I am so proud of them. All the work that I put into this, I feel very proud about myself. I definitely feel proud of winning this tournament, and I feel proud my teammates helped me. It's amazing what the power of gamification can do to spark a student's curiosity. We see pockets of innovation at all schools, but the challenge remains, how can we scale innovation? In our next group of speakers, we've been thinking a lot about that issue. First, we'll be joined by Joseph South, the Chief Learning Officer at ISTE. He'll talk to us about designing instruction for each learner. After Joseph, we'll hear from Deidre Kornstrom, Microsoft's VP of Educational Experiences, and Kate Griggs, CEO of Made by Dyslexia. They'll discuss some opportunities for technology supporting dyslexic learners. Let's start with Joseph. Hi, everyone. My name is Joseph South, and I'm the Chief Learning Officer for ISTE. I believe that accessibility and inclusion hold the key to drastically improving equity for students around the world. Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, is an approach to teaching and learning that assumes that the barriers to learning are in the design of the environment, not the student. There's no such thing as an average student. There never has been, and there never will be. So this model assumes that every learner is different instead of applying one method, usually a textbook and a lecture, to the entire class. Teaching to the middle ignores all the things that make students unique, their backgrounds, their experiences, their motivations, their skills, and really importantly, differences in how their bodies and minds process information. UDL plans for variability. It expects students to come just as they are. That's what I love about Microsoft's accessibility tools. They're built into software that everyone uses and are designed to meet a huge diversity of learning needs. Maybe your student's a second language learner or maybe their cultural background doesn't match the context of the passage they're studying. And they can use some visual cues to help them understand better. Whatever the situation, 
they can benefit from using the same tools as everyone else in the class, or she moves the stigma of needing extra help. We have some outstanding guests here today to help us dig a little deeper. Stay tuned for a glimpse into the latest EdTech innovations, educator success stories, and more. Hi everyone, my name is Deirdre Kornstrom and I'm Vice President of Education Experiences at Microsoft. I hope you're all enjoying the event so far. My team is responsible for Microsoft education products and solutions, but this work is also really personal for me. My younger daughter struggled with reading, writing, and math when she started school. And when she was seven, we learned she had dyslexia. She has benefited so much from things like using dictation in Microsoft Word to do her homework and using Immersive Reader with Minecraft. As a parent, I really appreciate and I'm so grateful of how this kind of technology benefits her. And I'm also so grateful for our next guest. She's an inspiring change maker who advocates for helping the world to understand, value, and support dyslexia. Please join me in welcoming Kate Griggs, founder and CEO of Made by Dyslexia. Hi, Deidre. Thanks so much for welcoming me today. Um, it, it's wonderful to be here. I, like you, have um, a personal story. I'm dyslexic. Uh, my whole family are dyslexic. And I was compelled to start campaigning and advocating in the area when my son uh, wasn't getting the support he needed at school. And uh, it's my, my passion and my mission to make sure that every single dyslexic child is supported. So Kate, when we first met, you asked me about my daughter's superpowers, which is so touching as, as a parent and, and such an important way to think about dyslexia. How is dyslexic thinking a superpower? So dyslexic people process information differently, um, and that results in this amazing pattern of strengths with creativity, problem solving, empathy, team building, all the skills that we know are vital for the future. Uh, and it's really important that we as a world focus on those strengths and support the challenges that we know dyslexics have with reading and, and writing and spelling um, and organization and all of those things, technology can really, really help to support. So we're free to focus on our superpowers. In your new book, This is Dyslexia, you talk about how education systems need to reshape how to spot, support, and empower dyslexic students. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, we need to reshape how we see dyslexia. We need to understand it as a strength and a really important way of thinking. And a report that we've done in the last couple of months with Manpower, the global recruitment firm, has found that those dyslexic thinking skills are even more important than ever. In fact, by 2025, 50% of jobs are going to be done by machines and the other 50% need human skills that match directly with dyslexic thinking. So it's really important that every single educator knows how to spot and support dyslexia, both the strengths and the challenges. And the other thing that we really need to do is make sure that all teachers are trained to be able to spot, support and empower these kids. Uh, and we're very, very proud of the work that we've done with Microsoft and the free training we have on the Microsoft Educator Center um, that is being picked up and done by teachers all over the world. What role do you see technology playing in that? I think there's masses that technology can do. Obviously, we can train teachers using online courses, but a lot of the tools that Microsoft have, um, specifically Reading Progress, which is the one that I'm particularly excited about at the moment, because as a dyslexic myself, I know how frightening it is to be sitting in a classroom having to read out loud or to have that test when you're one-to-one -one with a teacher and you're stumbling over your words. It's just an absolute game changer for dyslexic kids. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. As a parent, you know I care so deeply about this work that you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Kate and Deirdre. What I loved about that last conversation was designing for each student's superpowers. Great teachers do that so well, and technology can be an amplifier of that work.